My name is Melissa Bose. I'm the guidance supervisor of the district, and this is Carrie Wilson. I'm a elementary, Morristown Elementary School counselor. So the district has tried really hard to do a community night to invite parents, families to come, and honestly, we had a really great turnout tonight. I think we had about 50 some parents, give or take, which is huge because it is hard to do evening events. We understand families are busy and we had a lot of sessions, so this session tends to have a smaller population, which in our opinion is good because that way we can cater to you and we can answer your questions directly and hopefully we can be of help. So we have a presentation prepared all about what is bullying, what it is not, and how we address it. But it might help us if we know age levels of your children. So what's the age level of your children? All of them? I have a, a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and a three-year-old. Okay. okay, so elementary age primarily right now. And your children? I have eighth grade and sixth grade. Eighth and sixth. Okay. That's fourth, second, and first. Fourth, second, and first. Okay. Great. I am coming from the perspective of um, working in education, but also a mom of three. I have a nine year old, a seven year old, and a two year old. And Carrie's also a mom of two. I have an eight year old and a five year old. So, so <laughs> we know bullying is a big deal. And we have kids, and our kids come home and they talk to us about it. So, our hope today is to answer some of those burning questions of why does the school do that? Or what does that mean? Or so, please, we can be as informal as you like. Talk to us. Let's just, we'll roll through and communicate, and we'll make it very back and forth. So, this is the Hemfield School District's position. What is that? Hold on. Why does it on my screen? There's no yeah, word. Put. It does look different. Ian, can you come here for a second? It's not projecting like it is on my screen, and it's I'm saying sure. the same thing. It just doesn't say the position at the top. It says see this. Then when you put it on the screen, interesting. You just skip it. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I'll just read it. Okay. So the position statement. Every school district has to thing. take a position. You know, it's this is how we feel. This is what we think in regards to bullying. So, Hemfield School yeah. District, we're committed. We gotta go back. Yeah. Committed to providing a safe, positive learning environment for district students. The board recognizes that bullying creates an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. It detracts from the safe environment necessary for student learning and it may lead to more serious violence. Therefore, the board prohibits bullying by district students. Basically, we take bullying very seriously, and I feel like we've talked about this a lot, and things have changed a lot. When we were in high school, you could escape. You didn't have to be linked to technology 24-7. You could go home. Carrie and I were talking about this just a little bit ago. Today, it's very different. You, don't, you can't escape like we could. Um, bullying is a learned behavior. Therefore, the school stance is that we believe that we need to intervene very early on and we need to teach and be consistent so that we can help our students grow to become better adults. Think of all the education that occurs all day long. You teach, you reteach. When something's not right, you correct it. That's, a, that's what we feel about bullying. Um, the kids who don't get redirected and don't get that reteaching are the kids who continue with that learned behavior. So our goal is to intervene and re-educate and to make school a better place where everybody feels safe and everybody feels like they belong. Also really, as um, Melissa said, starting at a young age. So in the elementary is really where we start, starting in kindergarten um, with just talking about that at, at the age appropriate, appropriate levels and really working on the positive proactive piece and not so much the reactive piece. We try, um, a lot of us in elementary schools, try to stay away from the word bullying and instead using words that, what do we do instead? What does that look like on the other end of bullying? And teaching what that looks like. So we spend a lot of our time trying to be preventative. We know it will never go away, but we try to work on just teaching those skills of how do we look out for each other? What do we do for each other? How do we lift each other up instead of tearing each other down? Mm -hmm. And really, elementary is the critical age. That's where it all begins 
Um, research shows that elementary, especially, is where the most interventions need to occur because sometimes by the time you're teaching about bullying at the high school level, it's too late. So that's why we place a lot of emphasis within our curriculum to target bullying conversations, lessons, and preventative behaviors in elementary so that hopefully we can correct these behaviors before students age into middle school and high school. So if you, if you talk about the definition of bullying, you can look it up online. There's lots of different definitions. In our school policy, this is our definition of bullying. This is what we use to define when we're addressing if bullying actually occurred or didn't occur. And for bullying, it's an intentional, electronic, written, verbal, or physical act, a, or a series of act, acts directed at another student or students. Occurs in a school setting and or outside a school setting that is severe, persistent, or pervasive and has the effect of doing any of the following. Substantially interferes with a student's education, creates a threatening environment, substantially disrupts the orderly operation of the school. So that's what we use when we're looking at an incident to define, is this bullying or is this something else? So this is what it is to us. To give an example of what bullying is not, it makes me think of our younger students, kindergarten, first, second graders, where we have to do a lot of educating on tattling versus bullying. Um, Carrie, can you speak to some of the lessons that you do mm -hmm. to differentiate what is bullying and what is not mm -hmm. bullying? Mm -hmm. um, we, we talk a little bit about tattling versus reporting. What does that look like? If someone is hurt or in trouble, that's reporting. If you're looking to get someone in trouble, that would be tattling. Uh, tattling. We also spend talking, time talking about how if somebody does something once to you, that's not nice. That's being mean. Um, but when it happens repeatedly, that's when we look at bullying. And I think sometimes that is confusing to students, so we have to really let them know. If, if someone you know, comes in and says to you, like, your shirt's ugly, it's not nice. It's not bullying. If they come in every day and say that, then we have to take a different look at it and maybe we need to see what, you know, if, you know, that looks more, a lot more like bullying. So those are some of the things that we do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about Avedim and the preventative measures, but I think that's later. Mm -hmm. So if I had to summarize what this is saying, it tells me that it's unwanted behavior, uh, it's repeated, sometimes there's a power imbalance, and it can cause physical, psychological, social, educational, harm to a student. Um, we know as a district that when bullying occurs, it increases students' risks to develop depression, anxiety, sleep difficulties, and poor school adjustment. Um, we also know that if bullying is pervasive and continues, oftentimes bullies, bullies grow to have substance abuse issues. They also may have um, poor relationships in the future where they have a tendency to be more violent and not have good quality relationships. And there's also lower self-esteem for both people, the bully and the target or the victim. So from a school stance, our role is to really help the bully, but then also to help the victim. So we have to look at it from both angles. Something else that I often tell some of the older students when I work with them, um, is it, oftentimes things are happening outside of school. There's um, Instagram and Snapchat and a lot of our students are on those social media sites and oftentimes it's taking place outside of the school day um, and that's kind of out of our realm. However, I always say to them, what happens? You all are home and then the next day you come in and then it's brought back into the school and the classroom. Um, so that, you know, there, there's a fine line between um, things that happen at home, but oftentimes the things that are happening at home are then being brought into the schools and the classroom, and then that's interfering with their educational process, and that is when we do have to help and find to help find a solution. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the way the district responds, we respond swiftly, promptly. We, we try to be. We are impartial. Um, our goal is to look at the behavior, investigate it. Um, you know, we have to make sure that there's allegations and then see if they're verified or not verified. Verified. So the principals have a really daunting task because oftentimes it's, well, she did this, well, he said that. 
and then it turns into a he said, she said, back and forth. And we, ha we do our very best to have conversations with all parties to investigate each situation to the very best of our ability, where we're playing cop, we're interviewing people. Our goal is to get to the bottom of things and to help, but oftentimes we come up short. And when that happens, you know, all we can do is support. The main thing that we want to do when there's any bullying that's ever alleged is to respond and to treat the incident, whether we do that through counseling, discipline. If both students are willing, we might do a mediation. Um, we try to be as customized to the specific student and the situation as we can be, while at the same time partnering with families. Our goal is to reach out to families, and at the end of the day, I feel like our families, you guys are the experts of your kids. You know what's best oftentimes, what's gonna work, what's not going to work. So we really keep those lines of communication open and, and partner when we can. At the same time, there are times when it's a clear something happened, and because of this, this is the consequence. And when that happens, consequences are delivered to students in a way that the behavior we expect not to happen in the future because they'll learn from the consequence. So before we move on, um, like I said, we're never going to not have bullying. It's never going to go away completely, but our goal is to educate and prevent as much as we possibly can. So I'm going to show you K through 12 what we do and how we, how we implement our curriculum from the guidance department. Are there any questions so far in regards to the district's policy, their stance, what we do to try to respond as fast as we can. Go ahead. Can I see what you're alluding to? Sure. Um, the Everett Square Mothers District, um, and I can't remember the name of the class, but it was <clears throat> the same as they would do our mm -hmm. and then they have the same class. I can't remember what it's called. But it was, they would talk about being a good friend, being mm -hmm. a good friend. I do know exactly what you're talking about, and that's fantastic. We unfortunately don't have something that's that embedded in what we do, but we do through our guidance lessons that we go into the classroom and do. We really try to hit on that. And I find, you know, even when I'm doing a lesson on feelings, we talk about other people. You know, like we're always trying to throw in those those pro-social behaviors or how you should act and what you should say. So I. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It, it would be great. I would love to have a guidance class every day and it rotate through. Um, in, some of our, in some of our schools, it, it could happen a little bit more depending on scheduling, um, but it really becomes kind of a scheduling yeah, class. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is the perfect segue into the next slide because basically we have to be extremely intentional with everything we do. So we're not built into the master schedule. We don't have, you know, everybody gets to go to art. They don't get to come and see guidance. <laughs> I wish they did. Um, but it's not built in. So what we do is say in kindergarten, every elementary school in the entire district, all the kids are going to get this lesson. First grade, this one. Second grade, this one. And then we try to rotate through all the grades so we know that our curriculum's being delivered to all the students. I mean, Hempfield's huge. So we really try hard to be consistent with our department so that our students are all getting the same advantages and opportunities as the other students in the other buildings. And, and with that being said, too, we all try to stick to the same curriculum. However, if things pop up, you know, a teacher says we are really, or a grade level says we're having an issue with this, we do that additionally, too, because you're always going to have that happening. So we don't, it's not set in stone. We try to make sure we hit these so all students have it across the district. But we also do make sure that we get in when there is a certain issue. Just recently, um, in my building, there was just a concern with the introduction of the iPads and, you know, what, what are, what, what safety features, and, and that's a district thing, but it's also teaching about the kids. What do you do? You come across something and it's not appropriate, but you didn't try it. You know, what do you do about that? So we, I went into fifth and sixth grade and we had a conversation about that. So, you know, just kind of pushing in when, when they need it. And teachers, for the most part, are very receptive to that, which I'm thankful for. <laughs> we all are. That's a huge point, and I want to reiterate that. We are very preventative in everything we do. We plan, we're intentional, we know what we're going to do and why we're going to do it, but at the same time, our job, the nature of it, is to be responsive. 
So what Carrie just referenced is the bulk of a, a lot of what we do. So if in fifth grade, there tends to be this big issue where all these girls are being mean to each other, we're gonna go into the fifth grade once, twice, three times, whatever, and teach these students about relational aggression. Um, if third grade just tends to be a defiant grade, if you will, where there's constant disrespect, then we're gonna go in and teach them why is it important to respect substitute teachers? Why is it important to behave in the hallway when you're walking and you know, integrate safety and things like that? Because it's all about teaching and reteaching and more people saying the same message. So we do, we're very responsive when we do notice issues. And that's why we work so closely with our principals. Our principals and the counselors work hand in hand because we really rely on each other to get the message and the teaching across. Mm -hmm. So if you look up here where it says curriculum, when I think of bullying, this is bullying. Bullying is huge. There's so many things that you can teach that fall under that bullying, that like self-esteem, self-control, emotional regulation. How to be a good friend. Um, we use Avedum. Carrie, can you speak to Avedum since mm -hmm. I know that you work a mm -hmm. lot with that? Um, yeah, we, we talk um, with Avedum, it, we do it across the district. Um, in the elementary level, it's kind of just looking out for each other and what does that look like in the, the, the main um, uh, theme of Avedum is I've got your back, so I'm going to look out for you. And it looks very different in the middle school and high school than it does in the elementary, but in the elementary, it's kind of looking at each other and if you notice things, if you notice sadness, if you notice um, someone kind of pulling away or not playing with people, what do you do? And kind of it's your responsibility to go. And even if it's not your friend, what do you say to them and what does that look like? Um, so th we focus really hard on that in um, you know, K through three and it looks a little different as they get older um, because that's where they might start to see the signs of students withdrawing if there is some bullying taking place. So getting them to recognize it and then what do they do about it? Um, and just kind of looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. How long has kind of this been a part of your curriculum? Curriculum, a um, couple of years now. Mm -hmm. I, I feel Avidam was, I think it started first in the middle school and high school, um, and, and it, it had to deal with depression, but we don't talk about depression in elementary schools, but we talk about different light. We talk about sadness. How with long the curriculum has trailed Right, not all of this. I mean, they probably had pieces. We've the nice thing is, as um, we've had different administrators, they have seen the um, importance of guidance, and they have added us. So when I started, I was the first counselor. When I started counseling eight or nine years ago, I was the first counselor that got a full-time building. So since then, we've really been able to ramp up our program because we have a counselor in every building. Therefore, we can do all these things. But it just wasn't, it wasn't a possibility in the past. So it definitely, it's, imp it's great to know that we have their backing and their support and we've had a lot of, so it will only get better and it, and it will change. You know, as Melissa was saying earlier, it will change. Like we didn't have one-to-one -one iPad. We didn't, and that's going to be even more. So how, what do we do? How do we change our curriculum to fit the needs of what's happening in education? So ours is, although we have a curriculum, we stick to it, it also changes because it's nothing is going to be the same. You know, kids find different ways of, you know, being mean to each other. So we have to, we have to learn from them, unfortunately, sometimes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It, for the most part, the idea and the topic should be introduced and talked about. That is, but it's one piece of a bigger picture. So oftentimes you, we might go in and do an Avidum lesson, introduce it, explain what it is, and let you know, and use that language. Our teachers use the, our, that language. Like I'm looking out for you. I've got your back. Um, it might not look like consistent lessons. You know, I know. In, in Roristown, I've done it, I've really tried to do consistent lessons in first grade. Like, that's the grade I kind of like go in at, because that, and then I, then they know it, and then we can kind of build from there. Um, but it does look a little bit different from building to building. Um, but I know they all really try to touch upon that and talk about it, and. Um, so we're establishing that language, the framework for discussions. Um, your school might have a buddy bench, it might not. Some schools have um, raised money through their PTOs to have a buddy bench or get one. I know recently Mount Phil just got one. Um, so we use Avidum to discuss I've Got Your Back and that's one of the curriculums that we pull from. But that is something that you can have it um, in the district. Because I, I, I was getting the impression that generally the document for teachers. So my, my main concern has been, and I actually went to um, Mr. Kramer and Mr. Kramer and myself. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Right. The good thing about Olvaeus is it really brought the language and the framework to America. Olvaeus, like eight, nine years ago, was huge. And really what that is, it created this huge umbrella for all, for all districts to use as a framework. But the great thing about Olvaeus is it allows for you to supplement it. So we use the Olvaeus framework with our language and our teachings, but then we supplement it with different lessons from different curriculums that are all evidence-based, research-based. Avidum is one, and we actually do that K through 11. So like we keep it going because there's a lot of mental health and the lessons just build. But the students, I would say kindergarten, first, second, we're not emphasizing Avidum as much as we are the message. So I pulled up I our- know, I didn't know, I don't know how to get it come out. Our curriculum here, so you can see exactly, Ian. <laughs> I don't know why, when I switch over, it doesn't project. <laughs> In kindergarten, the focus is on friendship and bucket filling. So we do a lot of, like with my own children, if they do something that maybe isn't so nice, I'm like, oh, you just took away from my bucket. Or if they say or do something that's very kind, I'll be like, oh, you're filling my bucket. So there's a whole series on bucket filling and using put-ups and put-downs and things like that. So that's what the focus in kindergarten is. And then... Sorry, I if I can get you. Can yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to do it or not. There we go. go. Is that the one you wanted? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Um, We also talk about personal space. We talk about how to recognize and identify your feelings. Um, What's that? And even, like, I know when we do the personal space lesson, um, in the past I've done, like, well, how do you think that makes others feel? So always trying to incorporate, like, you know, and, and we talk about hula hoops and think about your hula hoop and like how does it feel if someone like we do this where we're really close to each other and some kids are like, and some kids are okay with it, you know, like well, how does it make others feel and what is their reaction and then what do you do based on that reaction? Now when I That's a great question. So I know that some teachers do have class meetings, but something that Bob teaches me, I don't feel that something as a district that can be incorporated. I just love to see the application process and why. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right. Right. And I think that depends, you know, from classroom to classroom and teacher to teachers. Like, I have some teachers that invite me into their meetings, and we can have that. You know, I can listen to what's going on and kind of get an idea and then know how better, how to direct. It, it just very, it does depend. And, you know, teachers are very, very um, protective of their time, their academic time. So, you know, like, any time I can get in, I've pushed into art classes, music classes. Like, I went into PE, and I did a, two second grade lessons in PE because I could get in. <laughs> you know, it's like a bonus. the expectation is, is when the counselors go in and do their lessons, the teachers are there. Mm -hmm. So we are working in tandem and we're partnering with our teachers. And when Carrie leaves, she will follow up with an email to the teachers mm -hmm. and say, please tell me if you notice any of these behaviors after I left, because we're collecting data constantly to see if we're having an impact. If, is it worth us taking away those instructional minutes to go in and deliver this message? Um, so oftentimes, that's the partnership with the teacher, which would be the class meetings. Now, it's different than Olveus in that I worked at an Olveus school for nine years. We had our teachers. We would do a class meeting once a month. We didn't do it as often, but it was once a month. Homeroom was extended. Everybody did the same lesson. But we ran into problems with that, too, because teachers weren't as invested. Or they would say, I'm not equipped to talk to teach this. I'm not the counselor. Or, so what we do is brainstorm and strategize how can we partner with our teachers when they're having issues and go in and do these classroom lessons. And with Olveus, they would give you the scripts, the videos, all of that. We have those. We also use Second Step, which is a really great program. I think the bulk of our elementary curriculum is delivered through Second Step. Mm -hmm. 